I keep my guns in a locked cabinet behind a locked closet door. The closet door was open when we got home. They didn't touch the cabinet. I guess they weren't supposed to take any guns that were inside a locked cabinet. Yeah, what they did is they exposed my guns to theft. Um, that case is fairly secure. Um, I think if thieves wanted to, they could probably take the whole case or use a, use a cutter to get inside of it. That's Cam Fleury. He lives in High River. He was booted out because of the floods. When he came back, he found out the police had been going through his house looking for his firearms. They didn't have a search warrant. It wasn't part of any disaster plan. They just sort of did it. Well, we told you about this story. The Sun led the charge on this. And then I got an email out of the blue from our next guest. His name is Lee Cutforth. He's the Alberta property rights advocate, and he joins us now from Calgary. Mr. Cutforth, thanks for making the time to be with us. Nice to see you. Thanks, Ezra. It's good to be here. Well, now, I did not know that Alberta had a position called the Property Rights Advocate. Tell me a little bit about this position, when it was formed, and what your mandate is. Sure. Well, it is a new position, um, new to Alberta, new to Canada. It's the first of its kind in the country. Uh, it was a recommendation out of the Property Rights Task Force report that was issued in February of 2012 uh, for a Property Rights Advocate office. And uh, the act was passed in the spring of last year. I was appointed on December 11th of 2012, and uh, we've, so I've been in the saddle about uh, six months now. Um, the intention of the, of the office, we have three tools that the legislature gave us. Um, one is as an re information resource uh, for property rights issues, people that are facing expropriations. Um, the second tool is a complaint mechanism, so that if a landowner is facing an expropriation and if the taking power is not following by the rules or the legislation, they can file a complaint with our office. And then the third is the annual report, and that's where uh, we can make recommendations on property rights. So it's more of a law reform function where we can uh, suggest amendments to laws or new laws that uh, help reinforce uh, the security of property rights in Alberta. Now, do you have a staff? Do you have a budget? Do you have investigators? Uh, it's nice to meet you. Is there anyone else with you? Well, we have a total staff of three. We, we've just hired a deputy advocate in uh, June. Um, he's a former farmer's advocate, so he's well-versed in, in a lot of landowner issues. Um, we have a total of three. There were originally going to be uh, five staff on board. Um, as you know, we've had some budget issues in Alberta, and, and uh, the budget has been cut. So currently we're operating with three people. There may be a fourth one coming on board uh, down the road. Do you have any power? I mean, you mentioned that you can uh, help people sort of be their ombudsman and navigate through the system, and you can publish a, a report in, an, in a sort of we ought to do this. But do you actually have any, any power, any legal power, or are you just an advisor, really? Well, there are no um, regulatory powers, so I can't impose penalties. Uh, I had mentioned the Section 4 complaint mechanism if, if a taking power is not planned by the expropriation rules. We issue a report out of that, and that report goes to either the court or the compensation board. And then the court or compensation board that's deciding that issue can take it into account in determining their costs. Have you done uh, this so before? You say you were uh, installed in December, so let's uh -huh. call it half a year. Have you had any fights so far? Have you issued such a report uh, in the six months you've been on the job? We haven't had any complaints under that section, Ezra. Um, so no, uh, most of what we've been doing is talking to landowners, um, taking a record of some of their concerns and, and really giving public voice to those concerns, whether it's uh, systemic unfairness with the law or even perhaps if uh, they're facing issues where the law isn't being applied properly. And, well, and Let's talk about the sorry? case that brought us together, namely the mm -hmm. High River firearm seizure by the police right. that was so startling to us and obviously startling enough to the RCMP commissioner himself who has ordered a review of things. Now, I read your letter on the show the other day, and I was grateful to learn of your new office, but it struck me as odd that you, who are within the bosom of the Alberta government, mm -hmm. would be asking, you know, you said, hey, Ezra, keep it up, keep me posted. Now, I'm, I'm glad to do that, but you're the guy who works for the Alberta government, in the Alberta government, have a mandate by the Alberta right. government. I, I found it a little bit worrisome that you're asking me, a journalist, I love Alberta, I'm an Alberta boy, but right. I'm in exile here in Toronto. 
I mean, have you made any inquiries about this RCMP gun grab? Have you written a letter no. to, to Jonathan Dennis, the, the minister involved? What can you do and, and what do you think you mm -hmm. might do? Well, you know, just to, to rewind the video a bit, Ezra, I'm not terribly concerned about that I'm, you know, not completely in the know because, you know, you say I'm part of the government and that, that's only partially true. Um, you know, administratively, yes, we are within the Department of Justice, but there is an operational independence here because mm -hmm. uh, a big part of what we do depends on the impartiality, nonpartisanship. So we are, to a large extent, removed from government Fair enough. Operations. I guess it's like an auditor general then, an auditor general, which is part of the government, but separate, so it is independent. It's great. Have right. you gone to High River? Will you go to High River to immerse yourself in the facts, to meet people, to get real? I'm just a secondhand uh -huh source of information out here in, right. in Toronto. High River is where, from what I read, hundreds mm -hmm. of firearms were seized. Do you right. think, I mean, Lethbridge isn't too far away from no, no. High River. Are, are you going to go there, do you think? Well, I, I think that that's part of the plan, you know, at, at some point to do that. Uh, certainly, you mentioned the, the public complaints inquiry going on, and, and I know the Minister of Justice here has written a letter to, to uh, make inquiries about those returns. And Certainly from our perspective, it's of interest. Now, as you have pointed out, you know, we don't have any direct remedial powers, but one thing that is going to be of interest to us in that uh, situation, uh, I know some of the justification has been that it was carried out under the Emergency Management Act. And you know, certainly if that's the case, then I think one of our concerns in, in property rights office is maybe that act needs to be tightened up somewhat to uh, to minimize, you know, misinterpretations like this, if that is the case. Mr. Cutford, it has been a pleasure to meet you and to learn of your office. I must tell you that uh, uh, I think that you need to get to High River, if I may be so bold as to suggest it to you. And I think you need to be a dog that won't give up a bone here, because I think okay. there is a property rights crisis in Alberta, and the pr crisis may well lead to your boss, Jonathan Dennis, who's who ha was involved with the RCMP, who signed the contract with the RCMP, who was down there in High River, who saw guns being seized. And I think this is sort of a test of the credibility, the first test of credibility for your office. Will you be independent, a watchdog that won't stop barking? Or, God forbid, are you just a placebo to tell people, oh, no, don't you worry, we respect property rights, but, you know, only if we get around to it. Right. I hope you rise to the challenge, sir, and I wish you well, good I luck. I appreciate that, Ezra, and, and I appreciate your thoughts, and, and I think I can give you the assurance that, you know, I understand you asking those questions, but people who know me don't ask those questions because they know I have the integrity to, uh, to keep that impartiality. I don't doubt your integrity, sir. Now I look forward to seeing your initiative. Come back on the okay, show and we'll you. talk about what you find. Thank you very much. You bet. Hey.